hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 3 and today i'm going to be giving you part 5 of what if naruto was a perfect experiment remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode well a new series over in anime king 2 of what if naruto rewrite the past Part 1 guys over on making 2, go ahead and check the link will be in the description for you guys to enjoy and stay tuned for a new episode coming over on making 3, if you're new yes you heard that correctly, I indeed have 3 channel, Anime King, Anime making 2 and making 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy, so go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family, and thank you for all for your help and your support, remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying talking about to all of you, so yeah. Without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last part we left off, Uncle woke up in a strange bed, as she didn't know where she was, until she realized that he was there. She was caught off guard in the force of death and she was subdued, and he bit her in the neck because, as she reached for her kunai, the fool had left her with her weapons as she attacked him, as she smashed him against the mirror that he was currently facing at the moment, as he better start talking or die. But she paused when she saw something on her neck. Well, something that wasn't there anymore. Uncle was shocked. The curse mark was gone. It was gone. She was confused as she looked at Naruto for answers. Before she broke down in tears. The reason why Uncle has been through a lot ever since being known as the Snake War. That one day Urchimar returned and claimed her and used her against the village. People had abandoned her. Many of her friends had no longer wanted to hang out with her. Luckily, she had a few good friends that were still her friends. But as she looked towards Naruto, he must have wanted something as he even got her dongo. He simply said that he wanted to be friends. That confused her. Why would he just want to be friends? He must want something. But yet he was calm. Nothing about his emotion given away that he actually wants something. And not to mention he was quite unnerving with his glances. And he made his intentions well known, well he wants something, he also wants her as well. But, despite he was probably a kid, he didn't look that way, not to mention he was taller than her. And he had a well built physique. As Uncle and him quickly became friends, their personality wasn't that different. As they started to hang out, as Naruto made his way to the academy, where he had to wait until Kakashi arrived. But he was going to do that as he left. He returned moments later, well hours, as Kakashi finally arrived he threw a dex at Kakashi. What was the man expecting them to welcome him warmly after being so late? They went to the roof as Naruto knew a lot about Kakashi. He also knew about Itachi as well. As Sasuke was angry when he heard Naruto call Itachi's name but Naruto told him that he was right in getting his vengeance after what Itachi did. As Sakura was confused. She did hear something about the Uchiha clan, but she didn't know that it was Sasuke's own brother. So with that Kakashi told him to meet him tomorrow, as they arrived early except for Naruto who arrived rather late, because he was busy with uncle, as she's been dropping by his house a lot. Well, he had a pool, and it was quite nice, not to mention he always had Seik and Dango, as their friendship built rather quickly. Harrison was just glad that he wasn't hearing any more reports of Naruto attacking people when he was drunk. Kakashi finally made his way there as Naruto warned him. Naruto told him that it wouldn't end nicely for him if he wanted him to fight to kill him. As Kakashi merely shrugged Naruto off and told him that he would be able to handle it. But that was a mistake. That was a big mistake. As both him and Naruto started to fight, Kakashi was off guard. 
underestimate Naruto was a fatal mistake that many in the past made, but they didn't leave the seat. But Kakashi was the only one that lived though. As Naruto demolished him, Naruto picked him apart like he was a child before crushing him in the ground as Kakashi was knocked unconscious. So yeah guys, those basic class were left off, you guys can switch across the blade, check out for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? The room start to become a bit visible. As he step out of the darkness view, Kakashi blink. As his one lone eye looked up towards the ceiling. Where was he? His body ached with pain all over. As he looked down to see that he had bandages over him. His shirt was missing and he had bandage all over his body. His mask was still in contact. Also his headband was still over his shirt and eye though. He wonder what the hell happened, why was he here? Did he mess up on a mission or something? He felt a cold breeze swept into the room and all members came back to him like a flood. Kakashi was shocked. No, he was shaken. He was he remembering correctly he wanted to himself. No, it can't be, he thought. No, it definitely can't be. But that was his last memory. Kakashi remember everything quite clearly. He had underestimated Naruto and he was pulverized. Even while trying to fight back, he was still no match. Given the fact that he never lifted up his headband to reveal his Sharingan, he wanted to but Naruto was too fast. As Kakashi felt a breeze once again, but this time it came a bit harder as he turned his lone eye towards the window as he saw a silhouette. Posing at the window, Kakashi blink. That's it. As he blinked at the voice, I thought you would be more shocked seeing me here, said Naruto. I mean, I have the dramatic pose, my hair fluttering in the wind. I'm like a god, said Naruto as he stood at the window sill. As he jumped inside, so you're okay, said Naruto. <laughs> Concerned that you're the one that did this to me. Well, yeah, said Kakashi. Well, said Naruto, I did warn you. I did tell you that you wouldn't stand a chance if I had tried to kill you. Luckily, I hadn't tried to really kill you. Because if I wanted you dead, it doesn't matter if you're the famous copy ninja Kakashi or anything. You would have been dead. Is that so, said Kakashi? You're rather arrogant, aren't you? Oh, it's not arrogant, said Naruto. You might think I'm just boasting about something, but even if you had awakened that little... Sharing of yours and placed on the battlefield, you still would have lost. It's just the way I was built, said Naruto. I'm built different. As Kakashi looked towards him with a stare. As Naruto laughed, don't worry, you'll get used to it, he said. The nurse said that you'll be out of here in a week or so. Your injuries wasn't that bad. Although I beat the crap out of you, I did hold back. As Kakashi sighed in annoyance, this was bad to his reputation. He act like he might not care, but he was defeated by... No. Well, you're not exactly a normal Jenin, are you? And there you have it right, said Naruto. I'm not exactly normal. That is why you should have taken me seriously. But if I was in your case, I wouldn't have taken me seriously either, said Naruto. As he sat down in the chair. You know, said Kakashi, you didn't exactly pass my tests. Yeah, but I did tell you what your test was about teamwork and all that bullshit but I have a proposition for you oh and what would that be it's simple you're gonna allow us to become team 7 given the fact that I'm stronger than you let's just get that straight you won't have to do much work I mean if you want to lay back and read that fantastic literature that you have there you can do as you please while I lead the team all you have to do is give me authorization and that's all I want. With me in charge, I'll whip them into shape. I'll make them become true ninjas. I just need the time. And you can just lay back and say that you have the best Jenny team. While I'm the one putting the work. Giving someone of your stature that is very lazy. I suppose you don't have a problem with that, said Naruto. Kakashi thought over the proposition. Hmm. Well, when you put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad. And you already know about the meaning of the test and not to mention 
You're willing to help your teammates even though you're quite stronger than them. Yeah, Senruto, so what do you say? Do we have a deal? Hmm. Well then, say Kakashi. As long as you don't interrupt me reading my literature. We have no problems. I thought as much, said Naruto. I already went to your little meeting. Kakashi blink. M my what? The meeting. Where you were supposed to tell Hokage if you passed or not. And I'm a real bitch, said Naruto. I told everyone that I, well, defeated you. In a rather humiliated way. So everyone know about your sore defeat to me. Kakashi blink at that. You just ruined my reputation, he said. Well, that will tell you not to underestimate me again, said Naruto, as he looked down. He could hear footsteps, someone was running, to make their way to this floor. Oh, and I also told your friend, your number one friend where you are. My number one friend? Yes, the guy that is brimming with youth. You did what, said Kakashi? See ya, said Naruto as he jumped through the window. The door burst open. Kakashi, my youthful rival. Is it true? Is it really true? Guy asks. Kakashi sighed in annoyance. He will have to get Naruto back for this. Time skip. Later that night. Uncle arrived to a rather... Well, unusual scene. As Naruto was by the pool, but he was not alone. There was a girl. She had short brown hair. She seemed to be in her early 20s or probably late teens. Probably 18 or 19. And Naruto was funneling her chest and making out with her. As Uncle cleared her throat, as Naruto turned towards her, you're earlier than I expected. Naruto gun, who is she? Oh, she's a friend of mine, Michael, said Naruto. Would you mind going? I'll call you later, darling. Michael pouted. I thought we were going to spend the rest of the night together. We'll spend another night together, said Naruto, and I'll make it wonderful, just for you and me. But I have some business to deal with, he said. Fine, said Michael. As she picked herself up, she was in her bathing suit. As she checked Uncle out. Hmm. Nice, she said. As she walked past Uncle. She swing both ways, said Naruto. If you would like to sample her. As a lure as that sound, Uncle said. I think I'll pass. I'm just here to confirm it. You. You beat Kakashi. Kakashi Hatsuki, she said. I did tell you I was strong, didn't I? Let me guess, you thought I was over exaggerating or something yeah said uncle i knew that you would be a bit strong for a genin but really kakashi he's an elite jodin not even i can beat him that means i'm stronger than you let me guess you caught him off guard while he was doing something perverted hmm well perhaps if he had his shuriken activated and was truly fighting you you wouldn't have won you know that right said uncle you say that, said Naruto, but yet, you don't exactly know. As Naruto vanished, Uncle felt a hand wrapped around her waist. Exactly how strong I am. As she felt his hot breath on her neck, she felt a tingle run down her spine. She did not push him off, even though he was all wet. Considering that he was just sitting in the pool a moment ago, as she looked towards the splash in the water, well, I'll give you that you're fast, but not fast enough. As Uncle burst into a volley of snakes, as she reappeared behind Naruto in a sunshine, as she nicked his cheek with a kunai before licking the blood. You shouldn't have done that, said Naruto. Why? Uncle dropped to her knees as she started to violently cough. Her skin was turning pale. As she looked down towards her hand, black veins were running through her body. What's happening to me, she said as she dropped to her knees and started to clutch her stomach in pain. She felt Naruto lift her head up by her hair before he locked lips with her. As she was taken aback, she was in too much pain to do anything. She couldn't even push him off. She felt something enter in her mouth, something slipping down her tongue, enter in her throat. As Uncle felt the pain subsided, the black veins vanished, her skin returned back to normal. As Uncle was left there panting, as Naruto propped her up, what the hell was that? I'm quite deadly when I want to be. I'm just giving you an example of how deadly I can be. You mean you did that asshole she said? You know I almost died right? Was that some kind of poison? I'm immune to most poison. How did that affect me so badly? Well, I guess you're not immune to me said Naruto. Your lips. 
softer than I thought said Naruto. I can't wait to truly have them. Uncle sighed in an exhausted way as she felt her strength returning so quickly. What did you just do to me? I injected you with the antidote. By a kiss, he said. Next time, don't just go licking people's blood. Well, if you want to lick mine, I can make it possible. But, ask first, said Naruto. As he started to remove his trousers, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going for a bit of skinny dipping, said Naruto. I rather like it. As Uncle watched him drop everything and jump in the pool, she shook her head in an exhausted way. He was really getting under her skin, but she was not going to give in first. She was going to make him beg for what he want. After all, she always had the advantage. Time skip. Rumors were spreading around Kanoha about the great Kekashi Hatake being defeated by a mere genin. But when people started to hear that it was the Fort Okage's son, some of them started to believe why. Well, he must be something special, maybe even greater than his father, as people wanted to find Naruto as he was ignoring them by going out of his way to make sure that they did not find him. Kakashi was embarrassed. Many of his fellow Jonins wanted to know if it was a truth. As he was getting more and more embarrassed the more they talked, even the Hokage came by to speak to him. Hiruzen knew that Kakashi had underestimated Naruto. He knew that he would, but it seems like he was paying for it, and not in a good way at all, as Kakashi was getting humiliated all over. Because Naruto was spreading some rather... Different news that he beat Kakashi with one hand tied behind his back. Given that Kakashi was in the hospital and the news were different, people didn't know if Naruto was lying or Kakashi was. Even though they were supposed to know that Naruto was lying because he was a genin, but Kakashi was in the hospital and Naruto was Minato's son, so he must be incredibly powerful. People just didn't know what to say or believe. And the news started to spread even more. Until everyone in the village knew about it. At the very moment though, at training ground 7, as Sasuke was annoyed. Everywhere he go, he heard about the damn blonde beating up their sensei. Their sensei was still in the hospital. He wouldn't be out until a couple of days. They wouldn't be going on missions yet, officially though. They were Team 7. But they were told to meet here by one of Naruto clones that there were some important things to discuss. As Sakura sat there, her mind was lost in thought. A lot has happened in the past couple of days. While well, the rumors and their sense of being defeated, not to mention, people are looking towards Team 7 as the number one team, saying that they will surpass many of the elites because they had the Hokage son in their team. As people are looking towards soccer with, well, recognition, even though she just became a ninja, saying that she was honored to be on the team as a same, son of the Namikaze. If only they knew that he was a goddamn pervert, they would change their mind. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, said Naruto, as he arrived. A pleasure, I'm sure. As you know, our sensei is in the hospital. Because of you, Sasuke said. Yep, said Naruto. And that is why I will be taking over. What? said Sakura. Who gave you that authority? Sensei did, said Naruto. So from now on, until sensei recover, and maybe even after, I'll be your sensei. Like hell you will, said Sasuke, as he turned to walk away. That's why you're so pathetic, said Naruto. Sasuke paused. What did you say? You heard me. Do you think the way you are now that you can defeat Itachi? Itachi was an elite, Anvu captain. Compared to you, you are nothing. Merely a speck on his boots. You are dirt. Pathetic. And if you continue on like this, he will kill you next time you meet. Shut up, Sasuke said. Why don't you meet me, you worthless bag of crap, said Naruto. Sasuke lost as he shot forward. First lesson, said Naruto. Never let your anger get the better of you. As Naruto grabbed Sasuke's fist and flipped him. As Naruto did not let him off easily, he slammed Sasuke viciously against the ground. Cratering it, Sasuke cried out in pain. As Naruto stomped him right in the stomach before brutally slamming a heel in his face. Sakura's eyes went wide. Naruto stopped, she cried out, as Sasuke crashed on the ground as he coughed up blood. Sasuke picked himself up as he spat blood from his mouth. I'm gonna kill you as he rushed forward, as he launched a kunai towards Naruto. Sakura saw Naruto's hand change color for a second before he batted the kunai away by the sharp end. How did it not stab him? 
Sasuke came with a flurry of punches and kicks, but Naruto evaded all of them before gripping Sasuke through it. He lifts Sasuke off the ground with one hand. Concerned that he was taller than Sasuke, he picked him up before throwing him gently. Several punches to the gut as Sasuke cried out in absolute agony. Naruto then jumped and slammed a heel into his head. Sasuke crashed down to the ground. Bleeding from his forehead, Sasuke rushed over as she grabbed Naruto by the hand. Stop this, why are you doing this to him? As Naruto threw her away as she dropped on the ground. Sasuke picked himself up. Now do you see, said Naruto. Running into something angry, without knowing the strength of your opponent will get you killed. That's something I'm going to break out of you, that arrogance that you had. Because Sasuke, as much as you talk about being a Uchiha, you are nothing, just pathetic. Sasuke rushed forward, but Naruto beat him to it and fist him in the stomach as Sasuke keeled over Naruto's fist and collapsed unconscious. He created a clone as the clone picked up Sasuke and headed off with him. Where are you taking him? Hospital said Naruto. He needs to learn. The rough method is the only way to teach him. As for you. Sakura backed away. What, what, what are you doing? She said. As Naruto stepped towards her. You're a Kunoichi. Do you know that Kunoichi are more at risk to get raped than men? Because you females out there, if you're defenseless, they will take advantage of you and use you for your body. And they won't stop until you're mentally and physically broken. As Sakura started back away from him, the next thing she knew she was roughly slammed into a tree as she cried in pain. Why are you doing this? What if I was the enemy, said Naruto, as he reached forward and grabbed the top of her shirt and ripped the buttons off, tearing it. She was wearing a black shirt underneath as he leaned forward. What if I was the enemy and you were in this position, what do you think you will do? As Naruto's eyes became cold, so cold, she started shaking in fright. He would rape you. He would violate you. He would torment you until you are a broken piece of mess that can never be put back together. And that is a way of a Konoichi if you're not strong enough to protect yourself. And at the way you're going right now, either you die or you get taken and your soul is a sex slave. Is that what you want? Naruto shouted. Tears start leak from her face. No, she said, I, I don't want that, as she started trembling in fear. As all the anger seemed to leave him in an instant. That is why you have to get stronger, he said. Sasuke is too arrogant for his own well-being. He thinks that he's strong, but he's not. And you, you don't focus on your training or anything because you're busy being a fangirl all the time. But if you continue on this path, you're going to either die or... The worst, said Naruto. And trust me, what I've seen out there in the world is worse than dying if they do capture you. So do you understand me, Sakura? From this day forward, you need to get better or you only have two options after you become a Konoichi. Do you understand? She nodded, frantically, as she dropped to the ground. She felt a hand in her shoulder as she jumped slightly as she looked up. It's alright, said Naruto. I know you're afraid. But at least you won't be alone. Me and Sasuke will be there to help you as well. But you need to get stronger. You're so harsh, she said. I had to be for you to understand. As Naruto looked at her strangely. What, she said. You remind me of someone, said Naruto. Don't worry, forget about it. He helped her back up to her feet. Sorry about your shirt. Oh, there isn't much to look at anyway. Well, in a few years, I'm sure that problem will be solved. Her face turned red as she clenched her fists. She tried to punch him, but he dodged all of her punches. Time skip. Kakashi had recovered a week ago, but he decided to take another week. Because he was humiliated. Or perhaps he just was too lazy to do anything. And Nurt told him that he had everything under control. So after the two weeks were up, he was currently making his way towards training ground 7. As he hadn't been able to see Sakura or Sasuke one bit, Nurt barred them from seeing him. Reason being, Nurt said that he wanted to get them ready before... They saw him, or he saw them. Kakashi arrived at Training Ground 7 where he saw Sakura, she was meditating. Upside and down. Sweat was leaking from her forehead, dropping down on the ground. As she was under a tree branch, her hands were locked in the ram seal. As she was sweating and holding her own there, he didn't know how long she has been there, but she was just staying there. 
She was not moving even though she was sweating quite a bit. He then heard a vicious hit. The next thing he knew, Sasuke was sent sailing as he broke right through a tree. As Naruto flashed in front of him, Sasuke moved as Naruto feet further, obliterating the tree. Remember, as long as you can dodge, your enemies can't hit you, said Naruto. As he flashed behind Sasuke, Sasuke ducked as he lashed out with a brutal back kick as it slammed into Naruto's guard. Yet Naruto did not move as he grabbed Sasuke's foot. And just like that, you're dead. As he twists and threw Sasuke in the air as he flashed above him. Sasuke was able to hold his hand together though. As he flashed through a hand sign before spewing fire right in Naruto's face. Only for Naruto to burst right through the flames and slam Sasuke in the ground. Sasuke coughed and wheezed as he lay there sweating and panting. His shirt and pants were a mess, torn up badly. That's time Sakura said Naruto. Sakura fell as she landed on her feet before collapsing, right on her butt. As she was exhausted, she was hyperventilating. As she took several deep breaths to calm herself. Well, that's no for today, said Naruto. Like what you see, Kakashi. Hmm. Seems you're doing good work here, said Kakashi. More than good, said Naruto. I was able to keep these sorry ass Jennings into shape. Sasuke glared at him. As Sakura glared at him as well. Come on, you guys were pathetic, said Naruto. Well, that was kind of true. But none of them want to say that about themselves. Sasuke was a bit pissed at me after I beat living hell out of him. But after I showed him that he was weak, he came to understand that he rather might help than me as his enemy. After all, I'm gonna help him to kill his brother. Kakashi blink. What? Yeah, simple. I'm gonna help him find his brother. When he's ready, he can kill him. Sasuke clenched his fist at that. It's one desire. And as for Sakura, well, she wants to be the world's best Konoichi. And I figure I can help her. Be strong. Fast. And not to mention her chakra reserves. She can learn medical ninjutsu. But we're gonna need a teacher for that. As Naruto shiver in fright. What was that about, said Kakashi? Oh, just remembering someone from the past, said Naruto. Until a smile came on his face. Yeah, they were huge, he said. But he didn't shiver once again. As Kakashi was confused. As Naruto shrugged. Well, you're up to speed. You two. You have two weeks to work on what I've taught you. And perfect it. Two weeks. Why two weeks, said Kakashi? It's simple. I'm going to be going on a break. Enjoying food. Women's. And what I want for the next two weeks. When that is up though. We'll be taking missions. And none of these sorry ass crap missions. I've seen some of the D-Rank missions that. God damn. I can't believe that Jennings actually do that crap. Walking dogs. If. You ever. Take one of those missions. Or to catch that damn cat. Kakashi look at me. I'm going to kill it. You what? You know that's a fire daimyo's white cat, right? And you hear what I said, Kakashi. I'm gonna kill that cat. So you better convince the old man to give us some more, well, better missions. When time is ready, that is why they have two weeks. To show that they can hold their own. You'll be the final judge of that. Until then though, when the two weeks are over and you test them. See you then, said Naruto as he walked away. And where will you be? You heard me, said Naruto, having fun, as he made his way off. He's not going to come back until two weeks are over, Sensei, said Sakura. When he puts his mind into something, he won't change it. He's a stubborn bastard, he is, said Sasuke as he got to his feet. But at least he was strong. Sensei, as Sasuke looked towards Kakashi, I heard that you had the Sharingan. I want you to teach me how to awaken mine. Time skip. As Naruto sat in the Hokage's office. So who told, said Naruto. Why didn't you tell me that you could remove the mark? Say Hiruzen. I bet it was your envoy, wasn't it? The cat one. Yeah, she's uncle's friend. As Hiruzen narrowed his eyes. How did you... You know what? Never mind. Why didn't you tell me this, Naruto? Because I know you were going to bring me in here and ask me a... A lot of questions and I have to say it's hard. It's hard to really explain and I know that you want questions and I 
don't really have that much to give you. Look, basically, I can absorb the curse mark by just feasting on it. It's my own word, but yes, that's it. My body is in tune with the mark itself. I don't physically have it on the outside, but I do have it. That's one thing that you should know. And I'm capable of erasing it, but yet I cannot create it. Orochimaru made me to be perfect. He gave me things that, well, he thought I would need to help him in his conquests. But he never knew that I would end up betraying him. I think he should have known that though because I don't really like him. Here's an artist's eyes. You never tell me exactly why you betrayed him. Why you decided to come here, other than stay with him even though he was the one that raised you. To tell you the truth, old man, I was bored. What? Yeah, simple. There was a lot to do moving around, new people to meet, but I always want to see Kanoha. It was worse when I met my parents. You, you what? Oh, I didn't tell you that, did I? Naruto, this is really vital information. How did you meet your parents? Their chalk was imprinted in a seal. Orochimaru messed with it to give me control over the fox. And he did something wrong and I ended up meeting my parents. And we talk. They told me they loved me. And that and that and yeah, we, we had a bonding moment. And I really want to see Kanoha. And my mom also told me that you were a good guy. A bit free and easy going. I want to see for myself that is why. I want to see if you would trust me. And I guess she was right. They also told me they loved me no matter what. And I figure, what's a good way of making sure that you are proud than helping the village that you were once from? So that's the reason Harrison said. More or less, said Naruto. And what else is there? Oh, I just really want Urchimar dead, said Naruto. And I figure that you'll be the one to help me do that. You've said it before that you're one of the strongest and you're meant to be the perfect being. So why didn't you just kill him yourself? That's complicated. Let's just say he's a slipper bastard. And when he has cards, he used them quite well. But don't worry, he'll die soon enough. As long as you can kill him. Me? Yeah, he was your student. I hope you don't have any feelings left for him. I want to live even after what he's done. Oh, trust me, Nurtekan. I know that I made a mistake in the past. Yeah, by letting him go, said Naruto. Here's a nerd's eyes. I mean, he escaped from you, said Naruto. But yeah, you're gonna fix that mistake, right? I intend to hear Sensei. Time skip. Later that night, as Uncle was making her way, Yujiu had really pissed her off. She had told all of them about the mark, and she had trusted Yujiu, but Yujiu was an anvil. She could not separate information from her duty. She had apologized to Uncle several times. That she had to inform the Hokage. Uncle had cursed herself for telling her. But she was one of her best friends. And Naruto had made her promise not to tell anyone. As she found him by the pool. This time there was no one there with him. She didn't know if he was upset with her. She didn't know why but she really came to enjoy spending time with the blonde. And she didn't want to lose those precious moments. Are you angry she said. As she saw him sitting there, his face was shadowed by the darkness. Look, I know that I made a mistake. I know you told me not to tell anyone but it was a mistake. I need you to- She paused as she heard snoring. Was the bastard sleeping? Uncle made her way and pulled him out of the darkness as he saw. He was sleeping. She slapped him to wake him up. Here she was, apologizing. Begging for his forgiveness and here he was sleeping. Huh? What, what the hell? Uncle? You bitch, said Naruto. You told on me. No, it was your little cat friend. After I told you not to tell anyone. We're no longer friends. Get the hell away from my yard. Look, Naruto, I can Naruto burst out laughing. I'm just kidding. Calm down, he said. Do you really think I'll just throw you away like that? Because you made a mistake? After all, it wasn't you. Well, I do require some um, payment for you making up to me. Uncle narrowed her eyes. What do you want? As Naruto got to his full height, he was taller than her, yes, as he moved forward. She was hesitant as he groped his arms around her. 
and gently cuffed her butt. He placed his hot breath on her neck as he slowly kissed her neck. She felt a shiver went down her spine. So what she said, you're, you're just gonna tease me? As Naruto broke apart, I'm waiting until you break said Naruto. But you seem like you're waiting until I break. Hmm, the game is quite fun. Let's see who will give in first. As Uncle looked towards him, hmm, she started to unclip her clothing before she was left completely naked. She jumped in the water. Well then, let's see who give out first, she said, in a teasing tone as she swam. As Naruto simply chuckled to himself before sitting back down. Time skip. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, said Naruto. As he entered in the mission room, there was Aruka, another Chunin, and Hiruzen. His team was already there waiting for him. He was the late one this time. Naruto said Kakashi. As Kakashi tapped his own cheek. As Naruto looked towards the mirror that was in there. As he wiped the lipstick off his cheek. So. It's mission time said Naruto. The week has passed. I suppose that they are ready. Yes I test them myself. They are ready said Kakashi. Finally team 7 is ready to take on mission Sirison said. I was wondering what was delaying you. Well then, I have the first hell no, said Naruto. Here's a blink. Don't reach for that pile, said Naruto. They had literally weeks to get better. And they did, Kakash said to himself. So, either you give us a C rank where we actually go to the village and do something, or no mission at all. Do not speak to the Hokage in that way, said Aruka. And you team are just fresh to Jennings. You've been here for about a month now. And there is no way that you should receive a C rank. Wait, wait, wait. Was I talking to you? you no, know you're not my teacher anymore, right? Said Naruto. Naruto. Harrison said, stop in Naruto. Look, I don't mean to be rude, but... If you give us one of those D rank missions... I'm sorry, but I'm going to do something bad. And I mean like, if you make us chase after the cat, I'm going to kill it. If you make us walk the dog, I'm going to probably burn the whole kennel down. If you make us pick weeds, I'm going to burn the whole place down. I'm going to do something really bad. And I just want to apologize for now. So please, let's just not make me go through with that. Aruka was fuming at that as he was about to explode. Harrison turned towards Kakashi first. Are you sure that you're ready? I believe that in these past couple of weeks they were able to achieve more work than they possibly done to be able to take on a C-rank mission. Hokage-sama, Aruka said. As Harrison raised a hand to stop him, man, he looked towards Naruto. As he could see the look on Naruto's face, he was not joking. And Hiruzen couldn't deal with any problem right now. And he knew how strong Naruto was, well, a fraction of how strong Naruto was. Fine. I was gonna give this to another team, but... I suppose you can have it as he slides a C-rank mission over. An escort mission, said Naruto as he pulled the paper before Kakashi could pick it up. Kazuna to the land of wave. Huh. Land of wave, huh? Before Naruto could say anything else, Hiruzen spoke, send him in. The door opened up as this man came in. As the man came in looking drunk, he had a seat bottle in his hand. A fisher hat on his head. Huh? Hmm. He looked towards Kakashi and Naruto. Well, these two are good, but why these two brats? As he looked towards Sakura and Sasuke. Sasuke glared at the man. He needed to get taller. Everyone was thinking that he was a pip squeak. Hey old man, said Naruto. Tesna turned towards him. You want us to escort you to the land of wave? Because they're gonna build a bridge. Tesna narrowed his eyes. Yes, that's correct. As Naruto stepped forward, as he gave the men a look, everyone in the room was confused. Well alright then, said Naruto. Let's get back in, shall we? Once they were gone, Aruka turned towards Hiruzen. Hukage-sama. Why are you letting him get away with things like that? Because it's going to be much more troublesome if he didn't go on a secret mission. 
We either lock him up in a cell, or he burns down the fields. Do you want him to do that? But Hokage-sama, Aruka, he's not joking. And I know I can just send him away or take away his shinobi license, but it will be more hassle. And Naruto is much stronger than you think. Did you know exactly what happened with the Mizuki incident? Aruka shook his head. Well, if you know, you would understand why I'm confident to send Naruto out on a C rank mission. Maybe even an A rank by himself. A rank, sir? Yes. Time skip. The group was currently making their way to the land of wave. Peaceful, calming atmosphere. As they were walking, Sakura was talking to Kakashi about the land of wave not having a ninja village of their own. Tezuna was looking at Naruto because something was up about the boy. He was giving him strange glances and smiles. When Naruto saw a puddle up ahead, as Naruto act oblivious, the moment they passed the puddle, Sakura hit snap as she heard a commotion behind her as two people burst out of the puddle. Go after the Jonin first. Both men paused, wait, as they were unsure which one of them was Jonin, Naruto or Kakashi, until their eyes fell on Naruto completely. The demon brothers Miyazu and Gozu started to sweat. Fear instantly creep in their souls as they drop the chain. It's it's the blonde demon, said Miyazu. Ah, Miyazu, said Naruto. Gozu, a long time no see. What, what are you? What, what? Both brothers were stuttering. Kakashi was confused. Did he know them? Naruto, who are these guys? Sakura asks. Just some old friends of mine. F friends? Miyaiza said as he started back away. Goes to doing the same thing. Come on. You know you can't outrun me, said Naruto. Both brothers gulp. So my suspicions are true. You're here to kill the old man, huh? Yes. But we won't if you uh, let us go. We, we can't just leave now like the last time. But please, said Miyaiza. As Kakashi was shocked, these two were the... Demon Brothers A B rank when combined but C rank when alone And yet they were scared shitless of Naruto First tell me, is he here? I I yes, he's our chief as usual And the lovely Haku Naruto asks I Yes she's here as well As both brothers were stuttering Alright then, oh wait Don't inform him about this because if you do Oh, you know what I'll do. Well, disappear. The moment he said that, they ran. They ran like their life depended on it. Well, it did. We need to talk, said Kakashi. Yeah, yeah, but before that, I knew that you were lying, old man, but I wonder if you would just tell us, or you'd wait until we die. I mean, what if I wasn't a complete badass, and we were facing dangerous missing names? What, what, what are you talking about, said Azuna? You can drop the act. Gato is in charge of Land of Wave. I know that he is. Considering that I am the one that made him go that way, Naruto thought to himself. But he did not say that out loud. And yet you lie about the mission parameters. Bad, bad move. You know that we can kill you for that, right? Tessuna blink. What's going on, said Sasuke. Yeah, what's going on, said Sakura. As Kakashi was also confused, but he knew the name Gato. Gato is shipping Magnet, he asks. Exactly, said Naruto. Yes. Yes, I lied, said Tezuna. Please, don't kill me. The Land of Wave needs my help. My grandson. He's gonna be sad if you kill me. He's gonna cry. My family, my daughter. She will be sad. We need... Wait. Oh man, said Naruto. As he stepped forward, the drone cracking as he moved. As Kakashi was getting alarmed by this, Naruto, what? Stop, Sensei, said Naruto. Old man, Tezuna was afraid by now, as the place was getting cold. Answer my question, truthfully, because this will determine if you live or die. Tezuna gulped as he nodded. Is your daughter hot? As everyone sweat drop, as Sakura and Sasuke collapsed down to the ground, including Kakashi as well. Tezuna blink. What? You heard me. Tell me, said Naruto. 
my daughter is a beautiful woman. What does that have to... Okay, said Naruto. Well then, let's get going. To the land of waves, said Naruto. Want to see your heart daughter? And if you lie to me, I'll eat you alive, said Naruto. As he starts to walk, Naruto waits to Kakashi as he stopped him. What the hell is going on? Tell you along the way. As the group starts to make their way, Tezuna blink in confusion. Did, did that just really happen? He wanted to himself. Well, they were going to help him. And this blonde was powerful, considering that he scared off those two guys. And they didn't even try to fight them. The group was currently in a boat after. They had to take the boat to make their way. So you're bringing us to go and fight the demon of the mist, Zabuza. And why are you so sure that his friends are not going to inform him, said Kakashi? Because I told them to. Why would they listen to you at Sakura? Oh, if they don't, I, they know I'll hunt them down and kill them, so pretty simple. They were afraid of you, said Sasuke. Aren't you, said Naruto. Of course not. Oh, is that so, Sasuke? Tell me, you're not afraid of me. You know I can throw you overboard and hold you underwater. Sasuke looked at him with a nervous tick as Naruto chuckled as he patted Sasuke in the back. Don't worry, just kidding, he said. So yeah, given that those two are here, I'm sure that Zabuza is here as well. We had history. Hmm, long, long history, said Naruto. Not to mention he has this adoptive daughter. And, well, I might have... Sakura Blink. What did you do, Naruto, she said. Hmm, well, in those days, I was a lot wilder than before. So... You're calming down now, said Sasuke. Ridiculous. Yeah, given that Kanoha is a lot different from the rest of the world, I'm a bit calmer now. But his daughter and I... Well, let's just say things in the end at a good term. And Zabuza wants to kill me. Pretty simple. But, well, we'll handle it, said Naruto. Kakashi sighed in annoyance. You know you're a lot more chubby than you're worth, right? Hmm. I've been told it a lot, said Naruto. As the group finally made their way on the island, as they start to walk once again. As Naruto whistled a jaunty tune as he made his way, he was just walking and whistling, peaceful as ever even though. Sakura and Sasuke were looking around as the mist was getting quite thick. As they heard rustling in the bushes, the group looked over. As Naruto watched as small, Bunny hopped out. He made his way over and picked up a small bunny. You know, strangely enough, I like rabbits. Weird, huh? As there was a whipping sound that could be heard going through the ear. As Kakashi leaped and tackled Tazuna down to the ground. As Naruto reached out his left hand and grabbed onto the blade handle. He was thrown. As Naruto raised his feet and slammed it into the earth. Stopping himself. As he gripped the massive blade stopping the momentum from hitting the tree. Bringing it down towards his level. Oh, don't worry, little bunny, said Naruto. As he held the bunny's other arm. You know that's not nice, huh, said Naruto. I mean, what if the bunny had gotten hurt? Laughter could be heard. Huh. Seems like Kami has given me a blessed day. To see you with this group so I can execute you. Execute you all. But especially use the voice. As someone flashed in a clearing. Ah, Zabuza. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. I told you the next time I see you, you'll be dead. You're ready to die, Zabuza Axe. Hmm. Well then, said Naruto. He tossed Zabuza blade and Zabuza caught it. Nice to see that you still enjoy a fight before you die. As Naruto chuckled. Funny, he said. He walked over. Hey Sakura, keep an eye on my little friend, okay? As he hand the bun to Sakura, who took it with that dumb nod. As she didn't understand what the hell was going on, why did Naruto give that guy back his weapon? As Naruto held out his hand, there was a poof. A blade that was sheathed with a black handle appeared in his palm. Zabuza, you said that if you saw me again, you would kill me. Are you here to make it a reality? Because I've been itching for a fight. We can actually get out of bloodlusted. Zabuza cricked his neck. 
Well, I'll torture you first by removing a limb or two. Don't know what the hell is going on with your head and that headband of yours. After all, you're never loyal to shit. Well, I change. How is Haku doing? Zabu's eyes became murderous as he moved. Boom! As Naruto's feet sink into the ground as the ground broke. The sheet of Naruto blade blocked Zabu's a massive, towering blade that tried to slice him in half. As Naruto simply smiled, well then Zabuza, let's dance. But guys, it being subscribed right here. If you want to make more to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on the bell, and keep it posted. But I'm gonna see you guys soon. Peace.